Hi, STEM and friends. Tonight we're going to use the Daffodil Daydream bundle. Um, it has these adorable daffodils. It has some speckles that you can use to kind of add a little texture to your cards. And um, this lattice look. Um, and then it has Easter blessings and Happy Mother's Day. I don't know if Mother's Day is different at different places, but Mother's Day is well after um, when daffodils bloom in Oklahoma. Um, it has a little butterfly, but and it's almost always after Easter too, but you know, whatever they think. Um, I did go ahead and use the special moments um, as I was planning this because this is the one of the celebration ones that you can choose with $100, but it has several really nice um, sentiments. So the one I used tonight is Hello Sunshine. I thought that kind of went together with that. So I've done a lot of different things, so I hope that I don't lose you on um, interest because there is so much, um, so many different ways that you can use this bundle. All right, the first thing I did was cut these out and notice that they're very long. So if you want to actually use the whole thing, a slimline card might be the way to go. Um, this card is, let me see here. It is eight and a half long, and then it is, I cut it to seven inches wide, and then scored, and so that makes my card end up being three and a half inches wide. So then, of course, my base is a quarter inch smaller than that. And I use this new, there's a set of new um, Stampin' Cut and Embossing folders. There's stripes and splatters, so this is the striped one. That I didn't use on this card and this is the splatters and I actually did a funny thing and I got them upside down oh you're not gonna be able to see that I do apologize um but it just has kind of you could use either side as is part of my point but yeah I got kind of two directions going on that but let's just imagine I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of um, adhesive on each end just to keep it from being impossible to work with. And then I'm gonna stick it down. This is Granny Apple Green, of course. And I like it because I think it's the happiest green. And then after I do this, you could, this is where I've, I've die cut after um, stamping. You could certainly put several pieces on here like this. I wanted to show you this. So this would be one way to make a really pretty card with this. Um, you know, making it into a little scene, kind of almost. And then just putting your sentiment in the middle. So maybe you would put your Easter blessing in the center and then, you know, then color it with your blends, of course. So that's one possibility. And then I also just kind of wanted to show you. Okay, so you have these four pieces that you can cut with your um, die cut machine. Now, I probably should have cut more of these um, long skinny pieces uh, because typically you see several strands going up from the um, ground whenever there is a, a patch of daffodils. But there you can see kind of um, that I've put two together, just kind of made it into a little, into a little thing. And the deal is that the angles of these um, are different. So you can kind of see that it's almost the same, but just slightly different angles. So let me just kind of let that, I'm just gonna let that sit. And then I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to put things, these things together because they are a little bit crazy. There are so many pieces. So these pieces are saffron and these pieces are Daffodil Delight. Let me grab this other batch I have over here. Let's see, there we go. I will have enough of these. So that's Daffodil Delight. I don't even know. Okay, so if you take, if you take the ones that you think go together and then you spin them around a couple of times, 
um, for me, it makes it make more sense of what goes together. Because like there, that to me is the, let's see, sorry about that. That is the proper placement of these. Now, nothing says you have to put all of these layers together. Because if you just take the base layers and then, um, like, say like that, and then put the trumpet. Now, I do think the trumpet does have to have the top on it. But just using the, the base layer makes a really pretty daffodil when you put the... Um, top layer on here. So you don't feel like you necessarily have to use all of these, but it certainly adds depth and texture when you do. Okay. Well, here's some more guys. Maybe they got over here. Let's see those. Okay, here we go. Here's a couple more. That is so funny how these are, these colors are apparently really close together as far as looking at them. One more there, yeah, that's not what I want. Let's see. Let me go ahead and try to put these on here. There's that one. And it's crazy how many of these there are. So you'll be able to really get a lot of variety in them. So what I would do to go ahead and put them together, um, I'm not big on a lot of glue on small things like this. I kind of like to use our glue dots, especially when there's a center like this. So I would probably put a glue dot to glue these together. That the top, the decorative piece, the cut piece, whatever you want to call it, to the base piece. So kind of like that. Oops, now I don't remember if I have this right. Yeah, that's not it. Okay. No one's going to know, honestly, if you get it off because it's so close anyway. Let's see what I think. Oh, yeah, there's the way I want it. You can just totally see that that's how they, they match up best. Okay, so, well, I'm going to have to pull it up, though, because I use that glue dot. Glue dots do not appreciate being twisted in any way. They will go back to the way they were. Okay. So then I think I'll use this one here. And then this piece and there we go. So then that piece goes on this piece. And then somewhere here, there should be some little, and I didn't get over here with them. There's another, well, that is too bad. Um, there is another piece that goes across. It's just like a little annoying lying, like a, it honestly looks like a maple seed. Those little helicopters that spin, except it's like there's two ends to it. And that goes over this one. Gosh, I so apologize. That's got to be so annoying. But anyway, um, maybe it'll make more sense when I show the other colorway, because maybe they'll be cut correctly. Okay. So then, you, after you glue these, now this one, I don't think you can use a glue dot. I think we're going to need to use our green capped glue, our mono multi, and just use some real light dots and glue it on. And then just glue, oh, yeah, and of course it slid. You have to be patient, I guess. I'm not a very patient person. But then you want to just glue this on and have it going the direction that you want it. Let me go ahead and put a little bit of glue on here because we don't want to build this up too high. That's the other situation that you can get in is where you've, you've built it up really high. Okay, so let's pretend that's how I want it. There go. And then to just put it on one of our stems like that. So there you can see I put it together. So there you can see it. I know it's a little bit of a light problem, but um, I think you can see the, um, the texture a little bit. So that is that one. And then I'm just going to go ahead and show you a couple of other things. 
this is the big envelope, the slimline envelope. It does have black on it. So if you were completing your card, using one of these that has some black sentiment probably would make some sense. Um, but you can see that these little envelopes um, hold these neatly. And um, it's really simple. You just, it has adhesive here that you just either moisten with a sponge or something and close up. And it's business size, so it's perfect for mailing. It's not a problem with mailing at all. So that's that one. What I wanted to show you with this is that sometimes you're going to need to cut these guys off because to put it on a normal size card front, it's going to be way too long. Now you can let this hang down a little bit, but honestly, I think it looks better if you just snip those off. So that makes kind of an easier way of using that. And then you can just put this guy on here and add these guys and you'll want to cut them as well. Let's see here, maybe right about there. And then the other one, maybe even shorter so that it has a little bit of depth. So there you can see how easy that's going to be to, of course you gotta get this guy on there kind of right, but um, how easy that's going to be to use and then just put a little Easter blessing or something on the bottom. And then probably, because you know I love a bow, um, the bumblebee gingham I have over here um, would be cute to add, just to add a little bit of um, cuteness in addition. And just kind of put that over to the side. So it's a nice simple card, but I think you'll enjoy it. So there you can see one way of using this that's really simple and wouldn't take you very much time to do at all. Okay. So now I have a couple of other things that I wanted to show you. Um, I'm gonna try to get these out of the way real quick. Um, the paper is what I'm gonna be using on um, Monday and the matching um, daffodil afternoon paper. So um, I wanted to go ahead and show you one of them tonight though, just to kind of give you an idea. So, I'm going to get this all out of the way, get my little butterflies. It, it comes with these cute butterflies, too. I'm going to do a little bit of coloring, if you guys feel patient for that. And if you don't, that's fine, too. <laughs> and let's see here. Okay. Get these guys off here. One more yellow. Okay, there we are. So, what I did here was I used this paper, and the paper is um, petal pink, kind of instead a polished pink, but I used the Blushing Bride because I didn't want it to be too much. I used the petal pink and the Blushing Bride also for my sentiment, and I think it um, sort of kept things looking a little bit um, coordinating with this background. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down. Well, I said it was. There we are. And this is the one that I put Hello Sunshine on. I thought that was kind of fun with this. So then now I'm trying to decide if I have this going the right way. Yeah, I think I want them going up. They're probably typically going down, but I'm trying to be... Um, happy with this so that makes sense with the hello sunshine then I'm going to go ahead and imagine some of these stems now you could easily put a piece of paper maybe not necessarily white because this probably is very vanilla but what I was going for with this was making it look like this is kind of our background but real life is so much brighter was kind of what I, I don't know if that's gonna if I'm gonna end up liking it but um, this is one of my favorite colors of daffodils so I think it probably will um, I'll probably end up liking it so I'm gonna just go ahead and glue these together and they do give you 
two of these bells for each um, in, in your set. So that makes it, makes it save you some time. Got these guys ready to go. Okay, so here is what I was talking about with these. Oh, there's a butterfly. I need to keep that out of our way. Okay, so we have these pieces that, see, I think that looks like a maple spinner. So now I just need to put this on here. I'm gluing that top layer on. So there you can, oh, I don't know if you can see it or not. It is white, but there's that. And then I'm going to get these two together with this one. And here is this one. So let's put some glue on this guy. Stick him on here. And it kind of looks like an echinacea, um, the way that it, that it sits on there. But um, it's going to look more like a daffodil when we get it all put together. So then this one, if you, I, I put it across here. And then put the um, bell on top. But you can do it a number of ways that will make it look like um, it's turned a different direction. You know, like it's like up this way versus um, another way. Or you can put it, you can put it behind and um, have it looking like that. So lots of possibilities there. You can even use it behind these if you need to. Okay, so I'm put some, whoops, got a little yellow on that one. Putting some glue on this one. Gosh, I hope this is the right one. Let's see. Uh, I don't know about that. I should have put these together, guys, before I... But it's good for you to see me struggle because then you can see. Oh, yeah, there we go. Got it. You can see how easy it is. I just spin it until it looks right. Okay, there we go. That's my, my properly laid out one. Then I'm just going to put these two together. Um, you could probably put these a variety of different ways to make your, like if you want to make your trumpets go in, that will be, you know, one way you'll want to angle these guys as if it's going that direction. But if you want to make it go up or down, that will also affect how you put these together. So just something to kind of imagine when you're doing this. So let me see which one I think that I am leaning towards. Probably that. Then I'm going to put my just a little more like that. And I'm going to put a dimensional under here. So there you can see that what I've done is just white for the base and then petal pink and on the edge the blushing bride. So then for this one, just going to put my glue on this middle piece, the part that looks like the maple seed. Do it like that. And then you can choose which direction I need to let give it a second there but then you can choose which direction you're going to have this going like you could have it go this direction or down like this or a variety of different directions but I'm going to go ahead also and put a dimensional under this okay so then I'm going to go ahead and take this away because I did suggest that. I think that would be very pretty. What would also be pretty is putting it on this blue one. I kind of wanted to just show you guys a hundred different things. I hope it's not um, disjointed to the point of annoying. But um, I liked how this just looks so um, crisp against the, the pool party. So I'm sure I'm going to put one together with the pool party because I really enjoy the way that it looks. But as you're doing this, it also looks good to just put these um, pinks on yellow. Um, that was something that kind of surprised me because it looks good with anything. <laughs> I think you could just about, and of course black, um, like, the, like the paper, is going to look gorgeous. Okay, so you'll have to see if you agree with me or not on putting this um, on this paper and making it white. 
like if it makes it look like a background or if it just looks like I should have used vanilla. So feel free to tell me in the comments and I will not be offended, I promise. Um, if you think I should have just used the um, vanilla or if you think the white kind of makes it pop. I am having a little trouble putting these on here because I'll have to do that later when I've got time. I don't want you to watch me do the tedious parts, but anyway, let's see, maybe like that. And then we've got several nice ribbons that I think I will want to add to that. And so um, there's a blushing bride ribbon that's really pretty. Um, some things like that. So I think I will definitely want to add some ribbon to this. Uh, possibly, though, that um, petal pink, and here's the bow I made the other night, that could look really elegant on this paper and with these die cuts. So I think that this these colors are so pretty. I was really happy that they that they made this, and this is my favorite daffodil. I had some in the yard for a while. I can't remember if they're still coming up. But I think that one is a really nice color scheme. Okay, so then for this one, I'm going to go ahead and color this. And we'll just see what we think about this. All right, so if you're bored, I understand. But I just wanted to kind of um, show some different ways to color this. This time I'm using the, um, trying to, there we go, there's my olive, um, the light and dark old olive. Now all I'm going to do here is just add a little bit of color here and there, just to kind of sketch almost the color onto the other areas. And then with that I'm going to use the colors we've been using, the pinks, or the petal pinks. I'm going to go ahead in with the dark petal pink and just kind of go around the edge. Let's go ahead around this trumpet and put, this is our polished pink. I'm just going to go ahead and put that around the edge and then I'm going to go over it. Just kind of blending that in. So if you did need to make a lot of these, I think you can see how quickly I colored that and how quickly you could color that. Um, especially when you use the colorway that um, has the, um, that uses the petal pink and the pink. Um, that even makes, that saves you even so much more time than making, um, the yellow daffodils, but I'm going to do that next. And then I think you'll see here, this is, I think that's really sweet on that pool party. So let's see, I'm going to use some this and this. So on this one, I'm going to do the edges all in Daffodil Delight and probably just this um, light Daffodil Delight. Okay, so now I'm going to use the light pumpkin pie to just kind of go along the edges here. Kind of imagine where these are going to be. And then I'm going to go ahead, because I'm coming back with my pumpkin pie. I'm just going to dot that over there because I'm pretty sure that's a trumpet over there. And I'm just going to add depth with this dark pumpkin pie. getting the center, getting the bottom and under the, um, the curved part of the trumpet. Then I'm going to go back with my light pumpkin pie. I should probably stop here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of the light poppy parade, and I'm going to see if I like it.
that. Yeah, there, I like it. I'm not sorry I did it. I'm not going over the whole thing. I'm just kind of adding a little bit of color. So I like that, but if you don't, I totally understand. There's a spot there I wanted to add some more. There we go. So there you can see those guys. And then I'm gonna go ahead, gonna go ahead and add some light granny apple green to my stems. Oop, wrong end. There we are. This I think would be adorable, and I'm gonna, I'll show you that in just a second, with a um, little bow tied around the stem as if it's a bouquet. Um, I really like that with this particular clump of blossoms. And of course, you know, we've done this before. If you were gonna put this on here, I have worn out probably about three of the light um, pool party by coloring this edge in the pool party as well. See what I'm talking about? Like coloring that as well and just kind of make it really look cohesive. Or maybe you like the white, it kind of makes it pop. So sort of up to you. Let's get this part right over here. There we go. And then of course we have our little butterfly. Oh, that's a damaged end. I'm gonna have to order some more of those. Good thing it's celebration. It's a good time for me to place that order. Just making it orange because I'm from Oklahoma. And I like Oklahoma State and I like monarch butterflies. So that kind of goes together. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of black. I may just use a regular marker here. If I can reach it, I can see it. I don't know if I can get it out of this little thing. There we are. Let's put some black along the edge there. And then I probably, I thought I had two of those. Oh, here it is. So I was, probably should have colored them both at the same time. That would have saved me a lot of time. But anyway, you can see how that could be put together. I'm just going to make a quick bow to put around the bottom with the yellow. But an orange bow would look good too. But we don't have um, a lot of orange ribbon. But, you know, we can always color the orange ribbon with our Stampin' Blends. So I might do that in just a second. Okay, so there, I might just set that at the bottom and that would really be cute. You could, because I used the um, light, Daffodils of Light, it looks a little bit uh, like it doesn't match, but I should just add a little bit more of the light, def of the dark Daffodil Delight to make my Mother's Day sentiment kind of go in together. So now I'm just gonna show you real quick, I'm just gonna cut a hunk of this and show you how to color this in case you would rather, in case you think orange ribbon would look nicer. And I'm not sure that I don't think orange ribbon would look nicer because it would kind of make that pop here. So what I have here is just a, a, um, a back from Dimensionals. It's just the leftover piece of trash. So I'm just gonna take my dark, and that's why this ended up like this now that I think about it. My dark pumpkin pie and I'm just coloring this like that. You do have to be careful that it's not just wet because it'll get on other things for until it dries. So there you can see, I just need to let this sit for just a second and um, it will be perfectly colored in the color that I want it. So that's all I have for you tonight. I appreciate you all stopping by. Bye-bye.